A luxury fashion houses are finding new homes in Hong Kong. Several high-end brands are looking to hit the public market in Hong Kong this year, including Ferragamo, Prada, Coach, and all with good reason. A report by Bain and Company says mainland China will remain the fastest growing market for luxury goods in 2011 as sales rise 25 percent to around $16 billion. Some real cash there to spend. Well, for more, we are joined over the phone from Hong Kong by David Winters. He's the CEO of Wintergreen Advisors. He's based here in the U.S. Uh, Winters is a value investor. I see him all the time at the Berkshire meetings. Uh, he invests in luxury brands, including Richemont and Swatch. He manages about $1.5 billion, and his fund has outperformed 98% of its peers over the past five years. David, good to talk to you. Betty, always great to talk to you. Okay, so, you know, we've just outlined how much money the Chinese are spending on luxury goods. Is that the real driving force for listing in Hong Kong for these big houses? Well, I think what it is is that the Hong Kong market is willing to pay higher multiples than other markets. And so it makes sense to get the highest valuation you can. Okay, that makes sense. But why then are these luxury houses even going public? What's behind this? Well, I think that... Um, you know, the demand for capital so they can continue to grow. Um, it is a competitive market. And, you know, as you were talking about, you know, China is vast and Asia is vast. And so to be able to build stores and inventory, companies need capital. And they, right, they need to expand. Um, and they're expanding mostly in Asia? I think Asia is seen as one of the real opportunities, but there's also, you know, Latin America is getting richer, uh, Africa is getting richer. So there are a lot of spots around the world where, you know, everybody wants to look good, Betty, you know. Right. And with these luxury brands, as you mentioned, in Hong Kong, they're willing to pay the higher multiple. Uh, and they're willing to pay it largely driven by what? Is it the retail investors that are trying to get into these companies? I think part of it here is that um, the people in Hong Kong appreciate luxury. And as you know from, you know, your time in Hong Kong, you know, there's a lot of wonderful stores here. People dress well here. And so I think there's an appreciation for living well and being beautiful. <laughs> Okay. And so, David, does that then mean that if we start to see listings in Hong Kong, eventually we will see more of those listings here in the U.S.? Does that pave the way for that? You know, it's not clear. I think that really what's happened is the world has changed so dramatically in the last couple of years that, you know, companies can consider, do we want to go public in New York? Do they want to go public in London? Or do they want to go public in Hong Kong? And I think for luxury goods, Hong Kong is a natural place for these companies to go public. And might some of them also use this money to fuel, act, to get some, to, to buy, essentially, to buy other companies? Might we see more of that? Well, as you know, there was a, there's a takeover of Bulgari by LVMH at a very handsome price. So the uh, Bulgari shareholders are doing extremely well. Mm -hmm. And clearly LVMH thinks they're going to do well out of owning Bulgari. So there's a lot of smaller brands, and it's hard to create, uh, as Richemont would say, the maison, the, the, um, the history and the authenticity that all of these companies want. Right. So it's easy. You mean so it's easier to acquire that and to actually build that from the ground up. Right. Like okay. Cartier goes back to the 1800s. Right. And uh, so you can't create it easily. All right, David. Thank you.